Hi, hello, Sarah here with Faithful Finish Lines. I run the Faithful Finish Lines Christian Weight Loss Program together with my business partner, Becky. I've lost over 100 pounds and have been maintaining it for almost 20 years. Becky has also lost over 100 pounds and has been maintaining her weight loss for a decade. So um, if you struggle with nighttime eating, this video is for you and is so important for you to watch. If you struggle with weekend overeating, if you are on a special diet, whether it's for medical reasons or by choice, such as following a whole food plant-based diet, this video is for you. If you have certain foods that you say, oh, I can't eat just one because then I'll eat the whole entire bag or the whole entire plate or the whole entire pan of brownies or cookies or cake, this video is for you. Something that we have noticed is that women in our Faithful Finish Lines program are really challenged by one of the guidelines that we give them. And what that challenge is, is that we require them to eat at least three treats per week. We define a treat as anything that you're eating for the enjoyment in the mouth. You're not eating it for nutritional value. Now, women can eat more than three treats per week, and many do. In fact, I eat a treat almost every single day but we require that they eat a treat at least three times a week. And many women really have a hard time with this. And we're gonna find out why a little bit later, but it's so important that you learn how to include treats along with your other foods as you lose weight. I like to tell people, um, don't do anything to lose weight that you're not planning to do for the rest of your life. Nothing magical happens when you get to your goal weight. I can tell you living life now at my goal weight, I still want to enjoy cake when I go to a wedding. I still want cake and ice cream on my birthday. I still want to be able to um, pick up a candy bar at the grocery store once in a while. Or, um, you know, people who want to have a glass of wine or um, drive through fast food and have some of that. So how can we make that possible during our weight loss without binging on it or overeating it? That's the critical question. So we see women in our Faithful Finish Lines program who are challenged by this. Also, this summer, I ran a 30-day uh, weight loss program called the Holy Mess Summer Weight Loss Challenge. And in fact, I'm doing another one this fall called the Holy Mess Fall Weight Loss Challenge. And if I had to say one mistake I saw women make in that group, it had to do with this area. Now, the group was incredibly successful. Most women lost six, eight, 10 pounds during the challenge. And what was really cool was that in the month after the challenge, they continued to lose weight and many lost six or eight or 10 more pounds. And I'm excited for so many of them to come and join us. And if you didn't join the last one to come and join the next one. But part of the fall weight loss challenge, every Monday night, I do a live video with some type of teaching. I answer members questions. I'm going to be addressing this exact topic um, because I just think it is so important. So part of my history is that I was a binge eater. I was a compulsive overeater. Um, honestly, my binge eating started as far back really as I can remember. I don't even remember exactly when I started, but I definitely was binge eating when I was a child and it continued to get worse. Um, as a teenager, I would come home from high school and binge on the snack foods and lunch foods that my mom had bought. She would get so angry with me. <clears throat> as I was eating like all the little individual bags of chips and the little Debbie snacks that she had bought for mine and my brother's lunches. And then as a young mom, I would binge when my kids were napping and after they went to bed. My husband's a pastor. Um, I struggled emotionally during those tough, long evenings when he was at work for meetings and I would binge at that time. I would drive through fast food. I would eat it in the car and then I would hurriedly hide the wrappers and come home and eat dinner with my family and pretend that nothing had happened. So whether your struggles are as extreme as mine or maybe not so extreme, maybe you just find if you bring a bag of chips in the house, all of a sudden the whole bag is gone and you don't even remember eating it. Maybe you sit in front of the TV and eat popcorn and you look down and suddenly it's all gone and you didn't even really enjoy it. Maybe once you've cut open that pan of brownies, it's like, oh, one more bite, one more bite. And all of a sudden the whole entire pan is gone. How did that happen? If those are any of your challenges, then this is definitely for you. Um, 
I want to um, clarify, I'm not a therapist and I'm not trying to give any kind of medical advice. There are some real eating disorders around binge eating. Um, at this point, I'm really just talking to people who find that they overeat a lot of food at certain times. So that could be often, that could be once in a while. Maybe it's like on weigh-in day. You're like, okay, you know, it's after weigh-in day. I've got a whole week to make up for it and you go and eat all the things. Maybe it's on the weekends. You stop tracking and you eat and eat everything you want to eat. And then you say, well, I'm going to get back on track on Monday. Or maybe you do have some more serious issues with binge eating, which I very simply would define as eating to the point of pain. It doesn't even feel good anymore. And yet you find yourself continuing to eat. So as I was researching this, um, thinking about praying about what I wanted to share with you today, I started doing a little bit of math. And I have to be honest with you that this math blew my mind. It blew my mind. And I'm 20 years into my weight loss journey. I've helped thousands of women through our Christian weight loss program, through our free challenges, through the Holy Mess three-day diet. And still, what I'm about to share with you completely blew my mind. So it's so important that you listen and pay attention to what I'm about to tell you. So what I did, I call this the math of binge eating. I ran three scenarios where someone goes off plan, they quit tracking, they quit paying attention, they kind of eat all the things. What does that look like in terms of calories and how would that affect the rest of their week? So I'm going to give you three examples. Um, They're not real people. They're just um, compilations based on my own experience and experience of women I've worked with. So we have Mary who has a fast food binge. We have Susan who eats whole food plant-based and goes on a binge. And we have Julie who goes on a weekend binge after she weighs in on Friday. So we'll start with Mary. She has a fast food binge. So we're going to assume with what I'm calling a binge is that these women have eaten or will be eating their allotted calories for the day. And when I call a binge is over and above their calories that their body needs for that day. So Mary goes on fast food binge. She drives through the drive through. She gets a Sonic cheeseburger, a Sonic hot dog, a large onion rings, and a large chocolate sundae. The total calories of that binge is 2,690 calories. Okay, so hold on to that thought. We're going to come back to why that matters so much. Our next scenario is Susan. Susan is a whole food plant-based eater, at least when she's on track. So she is really hungry in the afternoon. She's just not kind of satiated. Um, she had her lunch, but she's she's wanting to she's wanting to graze for something. So she ends up eating six whole food plant based protein bites out of the freezer that she made. Then that doesn't quite do it for her because she just really wanted something else. And so she's kind of grazing. She's working. She's in and out of the kitchen. She ends up just grabbing by the handful and she eats four servings of nuts. She's still whole food plant-based. But then later on in the evening, she's just still not really satisfied. It didn't really do it for her. So she ends up eating three bags of her kids' individual servings of potato chips. And then by that point, she's like, well, you know, I've already blown it. And so she eats eight Oreos before she goes to bed. Susan's binge was 2,345 calories. Okay, so we have Mary. Hers was 2,600. Susan's was 2,300. Now we have Julie. Julie weighed in on Friday morning and it's the weekend. So she has all kinds of reasons to go off plan because first of all, she weighed in. So she's got a whole week. And second of all, it's the weekend and she wants to relax and have fun, right? So Friday night, she eats four slices of Meat Lovers Pizza Hut pizza. And then she's like, well, I might as well just enjoy myself. She has three breadsticks from Pizza Hut and two Pizza Hut brownie sticks. She gets up the next morning. It's Saturday. She's got a really busy day running errands. She's taking her kids places. She's working on stuff around the house. They're kind of off their routine. Her husband's there. She ends up eating two glazed donuts, a a Starbucks pumpkin spice latte. And then for lunch, she's like, well, you know, it's the weekend. I'm busy. I don't have time to cook. She gets a Chipotle steak burrito. And then in the evening, um, she has several glasses of wine. So that is Julie's weekend binge. So her binge, again, this is, she had regular food during the day too. This is assuming this is above and beyond, was 4,105 calories. 
So each binge was between 2,000 and 4,000 calories. And I have to be honest that this really isn't that hard to do. I know that sounds like a lot of calories, but when you are mindlessly grazing um, on brownies, you know, these are very highly concentrated foods. It's actually really not that difficult to eat a lot of calories. I estimate that um, before I lost weight, when I was binging heavily, I could easily eat four or 5,000 calorie binges, and maybe it was even more, especially if I binge more than once during that day. So here's the critical part that I want you to understand. Because the binges were so high in calories, what if instead of restricting, restricting, restricting throughout the week, not allowing themselves treats, what if Mary and Susan and Julie decided to take those same calories and divide it out throughout the week? Because that's basically what happens with your body. The calories have to go somewhere. So when you binge or overeat or weekend overeat or nighttime overeat, your body eventually has to make up for those calories in some way. So what if Mary, Susan, and Julie said, I'm going to get smart about this. If I'm going to be eating 2,000 calories anyway or 4,000 calories anyway, I might as well put it throughout the week, actually pay attention to it, enjoy it. Well, listen to this. Either any one of these women could have had a candy bar, a full-size candy bar, like a Snickers bar or Hershey bar, every single day for seven days and actually eat half the calories that they did during the binge. A candy bar every day for seven days, seven candy bars is 1,470 calories. A full-size candy bar. How many of you would allow yourself a full-size candy bar every day during weight loss? You probably wouldn't. You probably think, no, that would make me gain weight. But the reality is it's the overeating. It's the times when you go off plan. That's what's making you gain weight, not the times that you're on plan. Okay, listen to this. Any of those women who could have decided, I'm going to twice a week go out for fast food and just sit down and fully enjoy the meal. So they could have had a regular uh, fast food meal, like a burger, fries, and a drink two times a week. That's 650 calories for the meal times two is 1,300 calories. So again, listen to that. They could go out twice for a full-size burger, fries, and drink meal and totally be within their calories and probably lose weight compared to a fast food binge that was 2,600 calories. Or one of the women could have chosen to have a bag of potato chips every single night for seven days. That is only 1,120 calories. Or this one really got to me. Any of those women could have decided that four times a week, they could have a regular size ice cream sundae which at 360 calories times four is 1,440 calories, half of what the binges were. So do you see where the math works out? It's challenging, but I want to encourage you to include treats regularly in your weight loss. The other thing that is so important is simply as a rock bottom basis, um, of all weight loss is that you're eating enough calories. It is critically important that you don't drop your calories too low. And I know that all of us resist this. We want the weight gone and we want it gone yesterday. I can totally relate to that. And you might be sitting here right now and saying, Sarah, you don't get it. I'm a hundred pounds overweight. It's affecting my health. It's affecting my knees. It's affecting my feet. I've got to get this weight off. And I hear you. Believe me, I do. That was exactly how I felt when I was 130 pounds heavier than I am now. But the reality is over restricting, you've tried that. You've tried that for years and years and years and it's not working. So now it's time to do something that really will work. Yes, maybe the weight loss will be a little bit more slow, but you can keep it off instead of yo-yoing back and forth and your body won't be deprived. You'll be so much healthier. Now, what about if you're saying, okay, that sounds really good, but if I bring seven full-size candy bars into my house, I will eat seven candy bars all in one sitting because that's exactly where I was. I'm not saying that's what you need to do. It's perfectly okay to create healthy boundaries around treats that can be trigger foods for you. So there's lots of different ways that you can do this. Maybe you walk down to the local gas station or 7-Eleven and pick up one candy bar every single day. 
Maybe it's that instead of driving through the fast food, because you know that you'd secretly order like four servings and eat it in your car, you sit in the fast food restaurant and eat it. Or maybe it's that you order one and you bring it home and you eat it where there's no chance to get more. Um, Maybe you go out to a bakery a couple times a week and you have um, a really delicious baked treat, but you don't bring a whole tray of brownies into your house. Um, maybe you do buy the individual portion sizes and that's enough to trigger your brain to say, wait, I don't want to eat seven bags of chips and, as opposed to the whole bag of chips where you're reaching in and before you know it, the whole bag is gone. There are lots of ways that you can incorporate healthy boundaries, but still include treats in your weight loss. So I would love to hear from you in the comments. What is your biggest takeaway from this? Do you find yourself tempted to undereat and then you overeat? What are your trigger times where you find that you're just kind of going off the rails? If you're like many women that I work with, it's night eating, it's weekend eating, it's vacation eating, it's after I weigh in, it's um, some of those times. It could be because you need to either to eat more calories overall or you need to include some of these treats on a regular basis. Well, like I mentioned, this is the Holy Mess Fall Weight Loss Challenge. Registration is not open yet, but it will be very soon. This is going to be October 1st through 31st of 2022, and you are going to want to get in on it. Um, registration opens September 16th, and actually for the first time, we are going to have a two-day early bird special where the price will be lower, and I've included three new bonuses that you are going to love. So if this area with treats is something that you find challenging, come and join the challenge. I'm going to be teaching about it a lot more. We're going to be talking about emotional eating, your toddler brain and your adult brain, and how to really build a weight loss plan that will help you lose weight, get to your goal weight, and stay there for the rest of your life. I'm Sarah with Faithful Finish Lines. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.